So you're thinking about getting started in photography, maybe you've been interested for a little while, you might have used other people's cameras, but you wanna pull the plug and invest in a camera yourself where do we even start? There are so many great options and so many different price points for different cameras out there, so it can be a little bit overwhelming when trying to figure out which to buy. And as a photographer myself, the last 10 years, I thought maybe I could help you out, give you some recommendations, share my thoughts, and hopefully point you in the right direction, a little bit of a buying guide when looking for your first camera. Everything I mentioned in this video will be cameras that I've used personally or cameras I know close friends have also used. There are so many great cameras out there, it would literally be impossible for me to compare every camera to every other camera. It would be pointless as well, so I'm just gonna share my personal thoughts and experience with a few cameras as if I'm talking to a family member or friend when asking what camera I recommend. I also think it's important to mention the cameras I'm gonna mention here are not necessarily beginner cameras. They're not simple point and shoot. They're more advanced and offer manual settings as well. So if you're interested in getting started in photography and you kind of want to take it seriously and you want to have room for development, these are the cameras I'm going to recommend. A simple point and shoot would probably be just as good as your phone. So instead of just holding up a camera and pressing a button, I'm going to suggest cameras that require a little bit more thought and you might need to know some settings. That way you're actually going to develop as a photographer using a camera and not just someone who wants to snap a quick photo because your phone will probably be good enough for that. One of the key things I want to mention here is that camera gear should probably last you a long time. Now I'm talking about at least three to five years. That's the type of investment you want to be making. The reason I'm mentioning this is that camera gear is expensive and changing bodies and lenses every other year is probably not sensible. Now, if you're the richest man on planet Earth, you can ignore what I'm saying and do what you want with your money. But as a sensible suggestion from one photographer to someone who's hopefully getting started, when you buy a camera body, it's also smart to think about the lenses you're gonna buy with it. Because if you buy a certain camera body, only certain types of lenses will fit it, the lens mount. Now, if you change that camera body, you also need to change the lens mount or the type of lenses that go with that camera body. So there's a little bit of thought that needs to go into this. You don't necessarily need to worry about it too much because there is also lens adapters. So let's say you buy a Canon EF lens and you have a Canon M camera, you can buy an EF to M mount adapter. So I don't want to worry you straight away here, but just keep in mind when you buy a camera body, you're generally investing into that ecosystem of lenses as well. So food for thought there, camera gear should last you a long time. You kind of want to invest in something that you see yourself using over the next three to five years. That's just my opinion anyway. Let's get started with recommending cameras in three different price points. I'm going to talk about cameras for less than 500 pounds. I'm going to talk about cameras between 500 and 1000 pounds and then some cameras 1000 pounds and more. Generally speaking with technology and gear, you get what you pay for. So I'm just going to let you do what you want with that information. Obviously, older cameras are not going to have the performance of newer cameras that maybe are more expensive. And cheaper cameras are typically the older ones. So obviously, the more money you spend, the better camera you get. Now, I don't want to make this video into the gear doesn't matter or gear does matter conversation. That's not what this is about. But if you have more of a budget and you want to spend more money, then you're going to get a better product. And the last thing I'm going to mention before I actually get to the point of this video and talk about the cameras I recommend is that I won't be mentioning video specs. A lot of these cameras also film and record video. I won't be talking about that. I'll just be talking about my recommendations based off of their photo abilities. The first camera I want to recommend is the Canon EOS 70D. I use this camera when I first got started with photography. It's a great place to start in the world of DSLRs. The camera has a good range of automatic features, so if you didn't want to delve into the detail and get confused with different camera settings and how to use a DSLR to its full capabilities, you don't need to worry about it too much. You can shoot a lot in auto. But if you did want to progress and develop your skills as a photographer and learn the details of how cameras work, ISO, aperture, shutter speed, etc., then it has great manual features as well. Like I said, I used this camera for three years when I first got started. And I actually started using its automatic features and then gradually figured out how to use it properly and then ended up on manual, which is how I shoot most of my photos today. The 70D came out in 2017, targeted as a mid-range camera. Because of the capabilities of it and how how complicated it might seem, it might be overwhelming for beginners. However, because the camera is a little bit older, the price has dropped. Therefore, I think it's a good place for beginners to start because, like I said, you can shoot a lot of automatic, very easy types of photos, but also 
get detailed with the manual settings as well. So if the camera was brand new, it probably wouldn't be less than 500 pounds. Therefore, I probably wouldn't recommend it for beginners as it might be a little bit overwhelming. But because it's a little bit older now, the price has dropped. This gives you the opportunity to kind of get stuck in in the deep end and uh, figure out how to use the DSLR because that will benefit your photography later on as well. The lens mount for the 70D is EF. So there's a wide range of Canon lenses available for you to buy and not necessarily break the bank. EF lenses have been around for years. So you can buy pretty much any EF lens and it will work with the 70D. So that is a big win. A downside to the 70D is its size compared to cameras released in the last couple of years, they're a lot smaller and lighter. The 70D is quite big, quite bulky, and don't expect to just throw it in your pocket. The autofocus on the 70D is actually really good for the price point and how old the camera is. I remember when I first started with photography, I was shooting a lot of BMX and skate park stuff, a lot of fast paced moving, sports related subjects. And the autofocus was what I relied on at that time. And I'm not gonna say it worked 100% all the time, but I can remember it doing a job reliably enough for me to sit here and recommend it. Another thing to remember here is that the low light capabilities of the Canon 70D is pretty poor. I remember if I was shooting inside anywhere where the lighting was just pretty average at your home, regular ceiling lights, it's dark outside. The image quality is not gonna be, be so good because the ISO on the camera, which is basically its digital exposure, is gonna to need to be quite high and it doesn't handle higher ISO very well. Now I won't complicate this video with camera settings and stuff, but the older DSLRs like the Canon 70D don't work very well at high ISO, it's as simple as that. So if you're shooting in low light situations, the image quality is gonna suffer, except it has a flash in the camera, so you could use the built-in flash, but for some situations, you don't want the flash look. You don't want the effect of a flash going off, but that might be the only way to get an image quality that's decent. So that's something to consider. If you're shooting outside in regular lighting, daylight situations, the 70D has no problems whatsoever, but in low light situations, it's not so good. If you buy just the 70D as a body itself, it will cost you about 300 pounds, maybe a little bit less, maybe a little bit more, depends on what happens to the camera market once this video goes up. But from recent research, about 300 pounds is a regular price for a Canon 70D. If you buy the regular standard lens to go with it, the 18 to 55 EF lens, that is less less than 50 pounds, so we're talking 350 quid here, possibly even cheaper. I think that is an amazing place to start with a more professional camera. Like I said, the 70D was targeted as a mid-range DSLR, so if you can get your hands on one of those, as a beginner, it's definitely a great place to start. A quick note on lenses, if you just bought the body and you wanted a better lens than the kit lens 18 to 55, I would recommend the 50mm 1.8. The 50mm is a very popular, widely renowned lens because it's so cheap, it's only about 100 pounds, and it's so good. Um, so if you are a photographer looking to buy a specific lens or your first lens, the 50mm is a great place to start. It's a nice focal length, it's not too zoomed in, it's not too wide, you can get some really nice portraits with it, etc, etc. So a quick recommendation from me, a little bonus tip would be if you are buying a lens for the 70D, I would recommend the 50mm 1.8. Other cameras for less than £500, I would also recommend a lot of the other older Canon 700D, 750D, 70D, 600D, all of those older DSLRs from that Canon range are all fantastic and I dabbled with loads over the years. So a couple of friends had a couple of different versions. They're all very similar. Some have more upgrades and better features than other. I had the 70D, um, but from everything I've mentioned about the 70D, you're gonna find similar features with the other versions, 700D, 750D exam for, for example. So check them out, depending on where, the, where you can buy them, the price of how much you can get them for, I would recommend pretty much all the older range of Canon DSLRs for beginners. So here's where your options are a lot more open. You can definitely buy some incredible cameras with some amazing capabilities at this price point. The cameras you can buy between 500 and 1,000 pounds might actually exceed your expectations and do more than you need. This differs from the category of cameras I mentioned before where they might be 200 pounds, 300 pounds, 400 pounds. As a beginner that's developing their skill set as a, in photography, it's actually quite easy to outgrow the gear. And that's something to think about Maybe you don't wanna just pull the plug and purchase a cheap camera, and it might be better to invest in a more expensive camera, like the cameras I'm gonna recommend in this range, because they might last you a lot longer. But if you're not gonna take photography too seriously, and you don't think you'll outgrow the camera's ability, then the cameras I mentioned before are probably good enough. 
but I know that the cameras are going to recommend now between 500 and 1,000 pounds will be good for years and um, they will be more than good enough for the photos you're probably going to start taking when you first get started. So for this price point, I recommend three cameras specifically. The Sony A6500, the Canon M50, and the Canon EOS RP. All three of these cameras are mirrorless, which is a big win. They're smaller and lighter. They're also a lot newer than the Canon 70D, which came out in 2013. The A6500 came out in 2016 and is the cheapest of the three I'm going to mention here. The M50 came out in 2018. It shares a lot of the same features and capabilities as the Sony. And the third camera I recommend here is the Canon RP, which came out in 2019 and is pushing the 1K budget. Depending on where you buy it, it might be more expensive than £1,000. It might be less expensive than £1,000. All three of these mirrorless cameras handle low light really, really well. From personal experience and from friends' experience that have and use these cameras, really good for nighttime and low light photography. So as something that you probably won't find is a good feature in older cameras, like the 70D I mentioned, with these new mirrorless cameras, the low light capabilities are great. All three of these cameras also feature strong video capabilities. Now I said I wouldn't mention it, but I wanna mention it because that will reflect on the price point. Now these cameras are more expensive because of the capabilities they have. So if you're interested in a hybrid camera, something that shoots both video and photo, then all three of these cameras have good video features. The whole Sony A6000 range of cameras, which includes the A6500 I'm mentioning here, all share a lot of very similar features. They also compare to the Canon M50. Now there's a lot of discussion about the A6500 versus the Canon M50, and that's why I'm mentioning them both, because you might want to enter the Sony world, you might want to enter the Canon world, you might want to delve into each category yourself, but I would recommend watching a comparison video, and I don't want this video to be a compare this camera to this camera. But the Canon M50 and the A6500 are very similar. The Sony A6500 uses an E-mount for the lenses, which is a very popular, widely available range of lenses from Sony and third party. Having lenses that are E-mount will not be a problem whatsoever, and if you decided to upgrade your Sony in the future to a Sony A7 III or many of the other Alpha series Sony cameras, your lenses won't be rendered useless and you'll be able to use them on that as well. So you're preparing yourself for the future here with the E-mount lens. There's loads available and there's loads to choose from. The M50, however, uses an M-mount, a Canon M-mount, which Canon do have a few M lenses, but not as many as Canon's EF range of lenses. And you can buy an EF to M-mount adapter so that could solve your problem, but there isn't many M lenses or the range isn't as strong as the Sony E-mount lenses. Now, like I said, you can buy an adapter. However, some lenses won't produce or be as compatible when you use the adapter. Sometimes you lose speed and quality of the lens and the camera. It's always best, and this sounds obvious, to use the native camera mount to the native lens mount. So if you're using an EF lens, put it on an EF camera. I've used both the A6500 and the Canon M50 for street photography, and I recommend them both. And if money was no object, I think these are pretty much the perfect place for beginner photographers to start. If you've got £600, £700, £800, I'd be looking at these cameras. I think they offer a range of really good features. They are really good quality. They're new, they're mirrorless, they're lighter. They have a lot of pros and not many, if any, cons. So. If you are serious about getting started in photography and you want to spend a little bit more money than a couple hundred pounds, you want to go to the you know, 500 to 1,000 pound range, the A6500 and the M50 are great places to start. The EOS Canon RP does come out on top out of this list from 500 to 1,000 pound. The EOS RP is probably the best camera a beginner is going to use. Now, if money's no object, go ahead and buy whatever you want. But the Canon EOS RP is so good that Anything better than the RP was probably not needed for a beginner, and the old saying, all the gear and no idea, comes to mind. Um, so I think the RP, if you've got the budget for it, is the perfect beginner camera. I know professional photographers that still use it and take it with them when on big photo shoots and weddings, for example. So if the RP is reliable enough for them, it's reliable enough for beginners. The RP is also a mirrorless full frame camera compared to the A6500 and the Canon M50, which are mirrorless, but they're crop sensors. The APS-C cameras, the crop sensor cameras, are what they say they are. They are cropped compared to a full frame sensor. In short and simple terms, a full frame sensor will produce better files and better quality images compared to a cropped sensor. So a cropped sensor with 
25 megapixels will not be as good as a full frame sensor with 20 megapixels. Basically, the resolution of a full frame camera is going to be greater than the resolution of a crop sensor. If you're shooting photos for a giant billboard in New York, then a full frame sensor is going to produce some lovely images, whereas a crop sensor might suffer a little bit. But by no means is there a drastic difference, and I could easily make this video and not mention it. It's not a big deal. But more expensive cameras tend to be full frame and cheaper cameras uh, with less of a performance tend to be APS-C crop sensors. But the difference isn't huge and we're probably getting too technical at this point. The reason I am mentioning it is because the RP is an incredible camera at a really good price point that is full frame. So if you wanted to get stuck in right at the deep end, the RP is a full frame mirrorless camera, which is probably the way forward in my opinion. I use a Canon R6, which is a full frame mirrorless camera. Brand new Sony cameras that come out are full frame. That's just the way camera brands and the camera industry seems to be pushing things at the moment. If I can recommend anything for beginners, it's probably a mirrorless camera. And if you can get your hands on a mirrorless full frame camera, even better. Something to remember here though is that the Canon RP uses an RF mount and the RF range of lenses is very limited. There isn't many at all compared to the EF range or the Sony E mount range and their, the RF range is a lot more expensive as well just because you're paying for the quality. You get what you pay for, but um, maybe that's not a good thing for beginners. However, I have been using the R6, which is the same mount as the RP. It's an RF mount. For the lenses, I use a lot of my EF lenses and I use an adapter EF to RF adapter, which doesn't have any reduction in quality or capability in the lenses. So like I mentioned earlier, some lenses are less compatible with some camera bodies. That isn't necessarily the case all the time. I use a lot of my EF mounts with my RF camera body. If I could honestly and simply get to the point of this whole video and recommend a camera for beginners with a medium ranged budget, it would probably be the A6500 or the M50. If budget was not an option and you wanted to splash a little bit, then the RP is perfect as it's mirrorless full frame and you're set for the future of whatever Canon decide to release. The RP has firmware updates. It seems to be getting treated like a new camera, even though it came out in 2019. I think it's a great place for beginners to start and I definitely recommend it. At this point, a thousand pound plus, you're going to get a very, very good camera that exceeds all of your expectations and needs as a beginner photographer. As the details are far less important because any camera that's more than a thousand pound will probably be spot on for every beginner. Although it might be a little bit confusing, you probably won't get the full use out of it. I'm just gonna recommend some suggestions and some cameras that I've enjoyed using that are on a little bit more expensive side, just so you know my opinion and my experience with a few cameras in case you didn't have a budget, but you are a beginner and you wanna splash some cash. So here are some cameras I recommend. The Sony a7 III is very popular and I know loads of people that have had one or used one. The Canon R series, so the EOS RP, like I mentioned, then the R, which is an upgrade from the RP, and then you've got the R6 is what I use, that's amazing. You've got the Fujifilm X100V, the x 100 F is really good as well. I think that's a little bit cheaper than a thousand pounds. The X100V is about 1300 pounds. I mean, at this point, I'm just talking about cameras that are good. Maybe if you haven't got a budget or your budget is between a thousand and two thousand pounds, just walk into a camera shop and they'll sort you out and they will know what to do. Um, yeah, it'd be good to not have a budget when buying camera gear, but I'm assuming most of us would like to know what price range certain cameras sit under. This has just been my experience. I've tried not to make this video as a Google search. This hasn't been the most detailed camera comparison review video, but I wanted to just share my thoughts as a little buying guide. If you're interested in presets, I have some Lightroom presets available on my website. You download the presets and add them to your photos in Lightroom. That way it gives you a similar style to how I edit my photos and you can change and edit your own style from there. So if you're new to photography and you've never used a preset before, check out my Lightroom presets on my website. If that's it and you're happy for this video to end, then it's ending right now. Peace.